Hello, it's Polish Paul VR. Welcome to the channel. And in this video, we're doing top 10 PlayStation VR games with AIM controller support. There is over 30 games supporting AIM, but I decided to choose the best ones and do a little compilation. So let's just jump into it and we're gonna start from number 10, which is Operation Warcade, a kind of now forgotten game, an older PlayStation VR game. But the game that really grabbed me when it's first released, it was one of those games I was really looking forward to. And when it's released, it was pretty good. It's still pretty good, but uh, during the lifespan of the, lifespan of the game, they did the update and somehow they managed to mess up the sounds a bit. But nevertheless, very nice game. You can play it with moves, of course, but also you can play it with aim. And this is based on Operation Wolf. So you will probably remember it from arcades. And that's what this game does, it takes you to virtual reality arcade and with the aim controller you've got that feeling of holding this gun and it just works nice, it's a very cool game and also it's got those immersive moments where it transports you inside the arcade cabinet and you get to see everything from the first person mode in proper virtual reality. A very original idea, tons of missions, tons of objectives, very nice game, I know it's older, I know it's not looking best but it plays really good. At number 9 we've got Unearthing Mars 2, a game that very, very surprised me. It sells for very cheap, it's kind of on a longish side for the price, about 3 hours. It's got nice boss battles, how you play in it, you basically kind of teleporting from one cover to another cover. And what you're doing, you can play it of course with aim controller and that's how it's played best. Now, this is a very big departure from first game because first one was pretty, pretty terrible. The second one, I kind of enjoyed it, it was okay, it was pretty cool, but it's ended like it's gonna be continued. Sadly, the studio seems to be on its last legs, so I don't know if you're gonna see any more of Unearth in Mars, but for the little price that it is, this one was pretty fun to play, to experience. Very nice big variety of levels, also it's had big variety of enemies. Few books here and there, but not too annoying, and controller felt great, and also never lost tracking thanks to the, they've been having it vibrating a lot, I think that's what's been helping as well. The boss battles was pre pretty epic, some of them really cool, really surprising, and uh, look a very, very high quality game. It's had some dull moments as well, don't get me wrong, but all in all, for the price what you pay, and of course for the ability to play it with aim, it was well worth it. Okay, at number 8 we've got Crisis Brigade. Not long ago I've done preview of Crisis Brigade 2. I actually played Crisis Brigade 2 yesterday on PC. I completed the game. It's super hard today. My legs are killing me because I've been squatting so much. But the game was great. Completing three missions in second one took me over three hours. But very, very fun game. Of course, very big improvement over the first one. But let's don't forget about the first one because that one plays good as well. Of course, you've got those cartoonish like graphics, nothing as advanced, but also not too expensive games. And also, it's got quite a lot of content. Now, when it releases, it's had three missions, then they added new missions, but also they added co op. Plays great in co op. I always feel like it plays easier when you're using moves but it plays even better when you're using aim because you're holding this gun, it really feels good. You can say it about every game that supports aim controller. Of course, for me, aim controller is best controller of them all. So I appreciate anything what supports me, supports it. And uh, Crisis Brigade, first one, just like the second one, is super, super difficult. But if you never played it, go pick it up. It's only cheap, play it before the second one comes out because second one is just around the corner. Okay, at number seven, we've got another little game for another little play price. This is Honor and Duty D-Day. Currently the developer working of the, on the continuation of the series, which is Honor and Duty Steampunk. But before that releases, we still can play D-Day. So what they did since the release, they pretty much supported it so much that the game is completely different now. It was pretty fun when it's first released. It's mega fun now. It supports up to 32 players. Not always servers are full, but I advise you to go to Reddit and join Honor and Duty D-Day community. That's when they meet in and plan in their games. Now you can play it with move controllers, you can play it with DualShock, you can play it with AIM or with the 3D router and also you can just mix and match those controllers as you wish. 
super fun game is got only online when you buy it but also you can get single player dlc which is not too expensive and all in all it's another of those games with this low poly asset art style and not the greatest graphics but nevertheless it's got very very fun gameplay and after the release they actually updated the graphics added the textures so it looks a bit better it's got also released on pc and got cross platform so once the pc players start pouring into the game there will be a bigger player base at number six a long forgotten co-op shooter evasion from the developer archiact lately they released of course free diver triton down for playstation vr but this is one of their other offerings and this is a bullet hell shooter that supports co-op and of course supports aim controller. The problem what I've had with this game when it's released, it was advertised as proper triple A game, which is of course not, but it's a solid indie offering. So plays nice with the friends, when you play by yourself the things can get difficult and some of enemies are really bullet sponges, which makes them kind of boring. In co-op of course is that bit better. Also compared to PC version they got the, the, the terrain destruction is pretty much not existent on PSVR while the trailers from PC and the trailers what they've been showing look a bit more better but nevertheless it's got nice big world, bit repetitive but it's a nice game it's on a bigger scale as well for what you're paying and it supports and controller very nicely okay at number five a game that i would love place higher on the list but kind of aim controller feels a bit tacked on because when you're holding your gun you've got that other little gun sticking out of your ear and also bethesda of course as always forgetting about left-handed people and never updated the game but nevertheless Doom VFR is super fun, I like to play it with aim controller, but when I play it usually I go for dual shock because it plays like Doom just in VR, but if you like your aim controller so much you can of course try Doom with it as well. As we know the game was originally designed to just use move controllers and it's got only 180 degrees button which made things quite difficult on PSVR and then just before release they added aim and dual shock support. So like I said it's a bit tacked on but nevertheless it's a very very solid game and of course for all the Doom fans to go into this world in virtual reality it just feels amazing. Okay at number 4 we've got Arizona Sunshine lately the developers released a deluxe edition which is basically the game all the DLC plus you get in like a skin pack from after the fall for, so you can kind of see what you'll be using in their future game and also you get in the soundtrack when the Arizona Sunshine first released M controller was the best way to play it other controllers had some issues with tracking and stuff even aim but they patched it all up nicely also the dlc adding a lot of course you've got this co-op mode as well so there is a lot of going on it was like one of our maybe one of the first ones proper first person shooters with smooth locomotion and proper story the game still holds up today and the game is still very very fun so i highly recommend picking it up at number three one of my favorites borderlands 2 vr you get in so much when you buy this game you get in proper campaign what you've got in the game but also all the dlcs so you get in about 100 uh, even more hours of gameplay of course the only thing is missing is co-op some people complaining about it a lot I didn't mind it, I still had a great fun and I played it with M controller even though you can play it with moves and dual shock and with aim even 200 weapons you have to of course control it with aim and just like with Doom VFR the aim controller was kind of afterthought so when the developers first announced the game it was only dual shocker moves but the community was very vocal asking for aim support and the developers said basically okay if you want it we will do it so they added it i'm glad i'm glad they did because borderlands 2 vr is one of my favorite shooters of all time okay at number two from the developers impulse gear come farpoint a game that kind of brung us aim controller because farpoint got design around aim the developers when they've been making this game they pretty much said to sony listen make the aim controller and Sony did and it shows because it feels and plays so good. After the release they supported the game a lot, they of course added this PvP mode as well but the campaign in itself it's on a longer side, the game shows those high quality production values everything is so polished very very good game highly recommend the developers already working on their another game 
what it is they didn't told us yet i expect him to hear it anytime soon now some sort of of the announcement they pretty much just teasing that it's gonna be a proper triple a game that's gonna define how the virtual reality games are made so i'm expecting something awesome but as of now of course farpoint even though it's quite a long time since it's released now still one of the best and most polished playstation vr games okay and at number one there could only be one game and i'm talking of course about firewall zero hour a very very good online tactical shooter i know some people complain about those lobby times but if you just forget about it the game is still alive the player base is still here tons of people playing it every day for many many hours the game is really good, did well, sold the headset, sold the aim controller, so I think First Contact Entertainment should be proud from making this for PlayStation VR, and also they supported it for a, such a long time with all the new DLCs, and of course very soon the developer will be revealing the gameplay from their upcoming shooter, which is Solaris, totally different type of shooter, but nevertheless they know what they're doing, I'm expecting Solaris of course coming to PlayStation VR, so with aim controller that must have in this game anyway that's the list let me know what you're thinking and of course if you like what you're seeing then please press a like because it does help the channel a lot and if you're new to the channel and are not subscribed then subscribe it's always better when it's more of us and that's it bye